there you go. There you go. So you're on. What am I trying to do? Oh, there they are. Sorry, the laptop was being very stupid, which is standard. Uh, right. <laughs> I know. Right. So what we're doing? Um, we're going into. Um, so yes, yeah, so as I mentioned, today's class is fine. Um, so I'll, I don't think there'll be any bit of the spine that'll be left undealt with today, which is nice. Um, I'll bring the course a bit into it at the end, so you don't get the lecture. So I like sapphire, I feel it's a bit lecturing. I don't know how to say it without going like, you know, saying, oh, well, when you feel like this, you're supposed to feel like this. You know what I mean? It's very lecturing. So sorry if it sounds like that. So <laughs> lie yourselves down, make yourself comfortable, and we'll begin. So thank you for coming again. It's a lovely day. And yesterday I taught it in the field and I think, you know, the room holds 30 and there was 10 in there, which is too nice. So I really do appreciate that you've come today. So settling into the space that you occupy on the floor, get a good sense of the physical body. begin to picture the body through the lens of the koshas. So I've seen the physical body first, the Anamaya kosher. Thinking of muscles, skin, bones. How does that physical body rest into the floor? Get a good sense of the length of the body from the crown of the head down to the heels. Width of the body from the shoulders and the hips. And then down the arms all the way down to fingers and from the joints the hips down to the toes. Get a good sense of the length of the bones, the turn out to the feet, turn out to the knees. Which parts of the shoulders connect into the floor? I would say just notice your lower back. Some feedback I had this week in uh, one of my lessons afterwards was that somebody noticed that the back sat differently on the floor. So I think it depends on how you hold tension in your body. If you tend to find that you, you know, you've got quite a flat back, just notice that. And then notice maybe if you've got quite a pronounced arch, notice that. And just notice, you know, hopefully at the end of the lesson there might be a little bit of change and a bit more space in back. So moving down one layer into primary kosha, so firstly notice the breath and how that connects into the physical body, how each time you take a breath you feel that through the chest, belly, wherever. Feel it in the nose, feel it in the throat. And then becoming more aware of you know, the wider sense of your know, energy, so just notice if you feel tired. Where do you feel tired? If you feel awake, where you know, would you say you sense your wakefulness? And then moving into Manamaya Kosha, so mind body. Is it with you or is it away from you? Can you spend some time with the body and your breath? So we we'll start the class down at the feet, so we're going to first start by extending out the toes as wide as you can and scrunching up the toes as much as you can. So extend the toes and scrunch the toes, extend the toes and scrunch the toes, find lots of space in the soles of the feet. And then begin to circle your feet at the end of your leg. Do you want to sit up and do this, the reclining bit? Do you want to sit up and do this? You, know, you can do the sitting if it rather than straining your neck, so you could just kind of sit up and do this if you want to. It's fine. Yeah, it's going to be back for your neck. <laughs> I noticed every time I sat down, you kind of looked up and thought, stand up. 
You still go the opposite direction, obviously, so you're using different muscles. You tend to, oh, well, for me, I always go the same way every time. And then relax your feet. And then if you could just maybe widen your feet out a little bit on the mat. And then notice your little toes. Now what you then just to roll your little toes into the floor. And then roll your big toes into the floor. So you're doing a bit of internal and external rotation into the hips. So even, you know, don't push. Just be comfortable in the movement that you're doing. And then placing your feet in front of your hips with your knees bent. We're going to drop the knees wide and then bring the feet, the knees and the feet back together. So just kind of dropping into a supta barakanasana and then standing the feet back up again. So just kind of working into against those hip joints a little bit more. And then I would like to lay down for the next one. So if you just kind of want to sit and see this one before uh, you lie down again. So I'm laying, look the way I'm spotting. I'm a bit more visible. I'll just move this way so I'm a bit more visible. Um, so I'm laying down. This is my right knee and I'm holding it in towards my belly. My left leg is laid on the floor and I'm just going to lift that left leg up a fraction. And then I'm kind of feeling that my back flattens into the floor. I'm feeling the tension in this hip to hold the leg up. And then I'm going to slowly lower the left leg down. Let it rest. And what tends to happen then is that right knee comes a little bit closer. And then changing this left leg, I'm going to turn the toes in and doing the same thing. So I'm lifting the left leg up, feel the back flatten. Feeling the tension and then I'm slowly lowering that leg back down again. And then I'm going to turn the toes out and do it. So again, we're lifting the left leg, feeling the back flatten. I'm kind of thinking as also of hugging the bone into the hip socket. And then slowly releasing the leg back down. So there's three movements, same leg. So right, hold your right leg and then you just take that left leg up a little bit. It doesn't have to go very high up off the floor. Feel how the back flattens. Think of drawing that leg deep into the socket and then slowly lower the leg down to the floor. When you get to the floor, relax, let the movement go. Feel how that right knee comes in a little bit. So you're going to turn the toes of that left foot inwards a little bit and then lift the leg up a little bit off the floor. Feel how the back flattens. Hug the leg muscles, the leg, the bone, everything into that hip socket and then slowly lower the leg back down. Let go at the end of the movement. Turn the toes outwards this time. And then again when you're ready, lift the leg up a fraction off the floor, feel the back flatten, hug the bones in. And then slowly lower the leg back down. Switch legs, take your right leg out in front, just maybe notice through the hips any differences, maybe nothing at all, and then bring the left leg in for a little hug. Interlacing fingers around the front of the left knee. And then again, slowly lift the right leg up, feel the back flattening, and then hug those muscles in, so you're tightening the tummy a little bit. Slowly lower the right leg to the floor, and as you do that, Draw the knee in towards the body, let it come in. Turning the toes inwards this time, and again, that little lift of the leg, feel the back flatten, hug in. And then slowly lower the leg. And then again, feel how that left leg comes in. Turning the toes out, lift the leg again, flatten the back, hug in. 
deepen sensation and then slowly lower the leg to the floor and again just notice how that left leg comes in. Bring both knees in towards the body, give yourself a little hug, push the knees away, bring the knees in, circle the knees, have a little explore of your hips just by moving your legs around a little bit. Okay, so dropping your feet down onto the floor in front of your hips, get a good sense of the feet and where you've placed them. And we're going to move up into a bridge pose. So firstly, draw, uh, roll your tailbone forward so the lower back arches and then flatten your back. Do that a few times. Get a good sense that that movement is coming from your feet. So it's like you're pushing your feet forwards to flatten your back and you're pulling your heels towards you to arch the back. So when you're ready, push down into the feet, feel your hips lifting up into bridge. Bring them focus into your big toe. So big toe pressing into the floor to guide those knees, to steady the thighs. And you can stay here if you want for 10 breaths or you can come down and just keep going up again for those 10 breaths. It's up to you. So just do it as an undulation, do it as a static movement, the choice is yours. Sink your hips down to the floor, cross your right leg over your left leg and then drop your knees to the left. So we all know our hips, if it feels wrong it probably is, so you can maybe uncross your legs and relax just into a more simple twist so it's probably a lot nicer for your hips. And if you've gone with the hips going up, knees going over, just think of them relaxing your left knee and that will just again release a little bit deeper into the posture. Often that left knee is kind of gripping in some way. Sense the space peering from your left knee to left hip all the way into your left armpit. Sending your feet back to centre, cross your uh, drop your right foot down, cross the left leg over right, dropping the knees over to the right. And again, listen to the hips. If it feels better to uncross the legs, go for it. Relax the right knee. Stand your feet back up, we're going to move back into bridge pose. So again, place your feet back down, arch the back, flatten the back, and then when you're ready, push down into the feet, rising up. And again, then focus on the press of the big toes, down into the floor, hips are lifting. And again, you have the option to come down and come up, or to stay static, staying again with your breath. Ten breaths. Slowly come back down, cross right leg over left, drop the knees to the left. You can turn your head maybe to look towards your right arm. You might even want to slide your right hand to the space above your head. So if you're taking that hand overhead, just make sure there's contact through the floor. So if your hand doesn't happily touch the floor, go wide. You know, maybe think of reaching out 
you know, to imagine that you're at the clock, your hand might be reaching out to 10 o'clock as opposed to 12. So as long as you've got support in some way under the arm, that is all I'm asking you to do, just to kind of feel the support, don't hang in space. So taking your hand back down, switch inside, right leg goes down, left leg goes over, twist to the opposite side. And again, if you wish, untangle the legs. If you wish, take the left hand towards the top of the mat. Find support through the bones. Again, check out your knees. Are they kind of tense? Can you let go of any tension through the right knee? They kind of want the, the idea that you can feel the bones connecting to the floor, softening all those muscles around just by having the support of the floor. Move yourself back onto your back. We're going to take the legs upwards towards the ceiling. And from here, lift your feet up towards the ceiling so you're peeling the pelvis off the floor and then drop the hips back down. So we're going to take an inhale, lift the hips upwards towards the ceiling, feet going closer. Exhale, hips come back down towards the floor. Really concentrating the movement in the pelvis, in the lower back. So it's, you could swing your legs and make the same movement, but I want that movement to come really deep down into those lowest reaches of the spine. So relax your hips down, take your left leg to the floor, keep your right leg extended. Take your hands around the back of your right thigh and hold on. Push your right foot forwards to hinge to seated. Okay, so what we're doing is going forwards is what we're going to do. So most of my lessons have you seen, you know it's coming, don't you? Sit down, child's pose, hands in front of you. <laughs> Spend some moments just let your breath flood into the back, into shoulders, into the neck. Have a little look at your hands and slide your right hand off to the right side of your mat and then bring your left hand over. And again, lower your gaze. So you're beginning to explore into the left wrist, the left elbow, down into the left side wrist. So you should feel it as a bit of an extension down that left side. Look to the hand, sweep your hands again back in front of you, and then take your left hand off to the left, right hand comes across, head comes across, and lower the head. So again, feeling this from the right wrist, the right elbow, all the way down to that right hip. Moving your hands back out in front, we're going to take ourselves into what I was going to do, which is going to foot up to all fours with the in-breath, out-breath, let the hips come forward, rest into hands. In-breath, elbows bend, coming down. Out-breath, sweep the nose, rise up. Use your hands to inhale and exhale, hips back. 
Inhale, floating up. Exhale, hips come forwards. Inhale, elbows bend. Exhale, nose sweeps up. Inhale. Exhale. 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 So this is our fifth one. The next one and we'll stay down after after we've actually done the movement that is. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. So slide your elbows forward this time. So we're kind of moving into our sphinx pose. <laughs> so your feet should be kind of nice and wide for your sacrum. Elbows can be forwards, elbows kind of listening to your back so you don't want to lift up too much. I want you to now close your eyes and just feel your breath for a second in your ribs. So as you're breathing here, you've got your belly on the floor, it's crushed, isn't it? So it's going to send your breath upwards into your chest. So as you take a big breath in, you feel your chest expand. And as you exhale, you can feel that chest kind of release and heart comes forward. So it's breathing very gently. Let your breath kind of massage the spaces in the thoracic spine. So look down towards your left elbow and cross your right hand behind your left elbow and your left hand in front of your right elbow. And then walk your hands outwards, dropping your chin onto your left upper arm. So you kind of tie yourself in a little knot. So you can always kind of, if you want to rest your forehead on there, but it's kind of, oh, you just keep your head lifted, but just let your breath flood into the ribs behind you. So again, really lovely place to just feel the space with your breath. Slide your hands back by either side of your chest, hinge up and exhale back into child's pose. Let your forehead sink towards the floor. Rest here. We kind of notice what you've done with your knees. If your knees are too wide, you're very welcome to bring them back together and support your chest. So, you know, whatever you do with your knees, if you have them wider, you might feel your chest coming flat out, it works more on your chest, you've got your legs together. It's a little bit more comforting for the lower back. So let's use our shins and push ourselves up to all fours, dropping your weight forwards over your hands and walking your knees back to come into a bit of a plank pose. So coming into kneeling plank if you wish. If you want to go deeper, push the heels back, press through the hands, moving into full plank, stay in here for 10 breaths.
Elbows coming wide, so if you want to drop the knees down to make it a bit easier, you're very welcome to. But elbows going wide to come down onto the floor. Lead of the nose, rise up. And then again, push yourself back up into plank. So kneeling plank first, knees back, uh, sorry, heels back for the second row. Moving up and back into the diamond facing dog. So use your hands to hinge your hips. Take a look at your feet, go onto the balls of your feet and use your hands to extend your hips back. So I want you to visualise what your spine is doing as you use your hands. Picture as you push your hands back that you can feel your tailbone extending up to the crease between, between the wall and the ceiling behind you. But as you're doing that, you're trying not to kind of over egg any of the curves in the spine. So it's very easy to kind of press the heart back and to kind of banana shape the spine. I want you to think about instead the neck, the ribcage, the lumbar spine. Really thinking of you know, creating so much in space but naturally through the spine. Imagine you've got a little string that you've pulled through to, to line up all those joints in the normal place. That's it, hands are spreading. Really think of those hands extending out from the wrists all the way to those fingers. Create the space all through the bones. And then taking a look at your hands, walk yourself into a fold. So it doesn't matter which leg you lead with, it doesn't matter at all. Dropping your belly onto your thighs. Take your hands in towards your toes. So if you've got your hands on the floor, walk them in towards your toes. I really want you to think of supporting your body with your feet. Lift up your toes, spread those toes, drop them down. Relax through the back of the head. So don't you do anything like pulling, just think of your head being like like a heavy weight it is, but I also get how heavy it is. If I'm four kilos or four pounds, whichever one's the heaviest, could even be 12. I've got no brain. And just like that head feel nice and heavy at the end of the spine. I really should remember facts, but I can't remember. I'll tell you all about what happened, like in Angeline, uh, the Johnny Depp trial, but can I remember how heavy your head is? No, I can't. Okay, so we're going to slowly rise to standing. So tuck your tailbone, rise up through the bone. And we'll just go through one of some salutations. So we'll just let those hips gently push forward, take the gaze up to the fingertips. And then push your hips gently back, roll down through those bones, placing your hands on your thighs, take a bow down. Inhale, straighten the arms, open out half fold. Exhale, take your hands to the floor. Walking yourself into a lunge. So we'll take the left leg back and lower the left knee. So if you want to keep your hands on the floor, keep your hands on the floor. But if you wish, push with your right foot to take the gaze up towards the front. Hands coming back down and then moving into plank. So a big push with the right foot to take it into plank, dropping knees if you need to. Elbows bend to come down. Lead with the nose to sweep up. We'll not stay in the dog, we'll push up and back and exhale into dog. Look into the left hand, step your left foot by it and drop the right knee or vice versa. Again, hands stay down if you wish or push, rise up. Hands come back down, big push with the left foot to step into a fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, full fold. Roll up through the bones to come to standing. Hips are going to push forwards and again extending back. Moving down one more time. Exhale. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, drop in the right foot behind and lower the right knee. So again, stay low or press and rise. Bring it back down. Push with the left foot to, to come into plank. So knees down. Always nice. Elbows bend to come down. 
Go again, just resting your breath. Find that way to get the right foot by the right hand. Lower the left knee. Press. Is. See my brain's cut, my brain, my cogs, my brain working. So you kind of walk in your left foot forward, your left foot back, your left foot forward, your left foot back. The reason being is I don't need to overstep. So eventually we're going to drop that left foot into the floor behind us. Keep it where it is. The toes on the right foot can lift up if they want to. I tend, it depends on feeling. I go with what it feels like in the knee. Place a hand on your belly, hand on your heart, and what we want to do is keep this still. Mm. Uh, so we're going to bend the left knee, so we'll take an inhale, bend just a little bit your left knee, feel the weight of your body going into that left leg and you could maybe straighten it a little bit, straighten that left leg, bend it a little bit, straighten it, bend it a little bit, I've just dropped that foot down and again straighten it, so you're kind of feeling how you bear the weight into that left leg, maybe go a little bit further this time, so you bend that left leg, we're trying to keep the pelvis and the spine in that nice straight line. So try not to curve the spine instead of using the leg. So again, sink back. Maybe go a little bit deeper. And again, push yourself back up. Sink back. And then maybe stay there. So just make sure you're not locking the front knee. And then if you wish, bring the hands to heart. Or if you want to really work your heart, take your arms wide and reach them forwards, taking the gaze to the floor in front of you. So you're kind of really supporting your body through that left leg. Have a little bounce, bounce, up and down, little rock. And then moving back, leaning into your right leg, taking your, I've done it wrong, ha, <laughs> left knee up. And then exhale, take your left foot behind, landing on those toes, push your right knee forward to come into our warrior. So this is always an option. Big push of the right leg, inhale, bringing that left knee up. Exhale, take the left foot back. And option two is to dip the left knee to go lower down. So then you can always kind of ground that back foot and have the right knee bent if that feels better. So again, big push, inhale. Exhale, foot goes back. So again, you can ground that left foot and press the right knee forwards, or you can dip the knee. Inhale, push. Exhale, back. Inhale, push. Whoops, the daisy caught my own toe. Exhale, back. Inhale, push. Exhale, back. Inhale, push. Take your left hand to the left knee. Bring your right hand up. So you can always lower the foot if that feels better, but just keeping the weight from that right foot. So a really light touch with that left big toe, maybe with just moral support. Maybe if you've got that leg up, see if you can let go of it and hold it. And then finally take the left leg back, moving into warrior two. You've got it going the right way. How the hell do you manage that? So you've got your right leg. I thought that was all going to go very wrong there. So you've got your right foot in front of you, looking at your left foot, taking your arms out, looking out towards your right middle finger. Congratulations, Amy. Action now you. Looking towards your right middle finger, we're going to just reach back with the left hand and then exhale, bend the right knee. So we're moving into our warrior two position. So the other thing I really ask is that those knees and those toes tend to want to revert better if they're going in the same direction. Really focusing on your footprints. Big toe, little toe, back of the back of the heel. Feeling the big, pre the big press of the big toe, all through, through the ball of the foot. But that left leg is pressing back. Lift and spread all those toes on your left foot. 
fan them out and drop them down. So you're kind of feeling that that left outer ankle is pushing towards the wall behind. I've been working on just mental, like this, the, the idea of going lower, but rather than bending the front knee, but to actually to work the back foot. So could you kind of make this a little bit of a more shallow warrior by, in essence, pulling your left foot towards the centre of the body, and that will straighten your right leg. And then to push your left foot away, which bends your front leg. So you're pulling your left leg towards you to straighten your warrior. And then you're pushing your left leg away from you to bend your warrior. Little movement, you can't think, am I doing it? Yes, I think I am. Just do it a few times. Pulse your warrior by using that back foot. So it pulls in and then it pushes away. It pulls in and it pushes away. I think I've done enough of this. Okay, so taking now your gaze to that right hand, take it up to sitting, moving it into our sun warrior. So you're reaching up with the fingers, reaching it slightly behind to the left. Keep your right knee bent. Straightening your, your, bring yourself back up to warrior two, taking your hands behind the body this time, clasping fingers. Rebend your right knee if you've straightened it, because I know I totally did. And then you're kind of turning your chest somewhere towards the front of your mat. So then you're focusing on collarbone, pubic bone, and we're going to take a bow. Keep the spinal lengthen as we bow down into our humble warrior. So you're reaching through the hands behind. Gazing down towards the right big toe. That right knee stays then. Hand sweeping down to the floor. Pivot your right foot so you're now facing the chairs on that right side. So when you come into position, lift your toes, spread out to the little toes, drop the big toes, and then walk your hands in towards your feet so you can feel that your weight is being carried by the legs. Really feel the full support of your feet. From there, you can then maybe feel it into the hamstrings, knees a little bit soft, lifting sit bones. Again, support through the hands is just there for that moral purpose, really. Don't do anything with them in particular. Let the back of the neck soften. Just really feeling the full support of the feet. And from there, things begin to flourish above. So pivot to face the front of the mat. Sink yourself back down into child's pose. And it's an inhale to push up and exhale to sink down. Inhale to come down. And an exhale, sweep your nose and then moving up into plank. So we're going to do 10 breaths in plank. So again, knees down is a great option. Pushing the heels back is another great option. We're going to repeat this sequence again, but we're only going to do five breaths next time. So moving up and back into a downward facing dog, looking back towards the feet. Again, hands are pushing. Feel what you're doing with the hands. Feel the push of the hands rise up into the sit bones, curving the hips up and back towards the space in the crease behind, between the wall and the ceiling behind you. So hands are active, palms are spread energetic fingers all through the bones into the shoulders all the way up the spine so taking a look at your feet walk yourself back into fold take a bow Again, lift and spread your toes, sink down into fold, knees a little bit soft. 
hands there for moral support, but on the ankles or on the shins or on the floor. And then curl up to stand. We're not going to do another round of sun salutation. <laughs> but now I've got to remember which foot I did last time. So, yeah, we're going to walk the right foot forwards and back. There you go. I can know what I'm doing, isn't it? Might be not quite nice for you to actually notice your footprint. So what your foot does, how that contacts the floor. Should have mentioned that on the last time. And then we're going to drop back into that right foot. So again, you can peel the toes of that right and that left foot up if you need to. Hands to belly and to heart centre. Again, that is just to tell you what your spine is doing. Bend just a little bit your right knee. Feel your weight go into the foot, into the muscles, the buttocks, and again, straighten it a few times. So bend and straighten. Feel your hips hinging, feel your spine stay straight. And again, you might go a little bit lower. Again, that front knee, you just kind of listening for that don't force through the front knee. So again, soften it, bring the foot down. Starting to work yourself deeper into the pose. So I'm now bringing my weight back and I'm going to pause. And then I'm thinking I'm taking those hands maybe to heart centre. I might be taking those hands wide and I'm just gazing down. We're staying here just for eight breaths because we've already done two already. So standing into your left foot, bringing your right knee up in front and take the right foot back. So again, you can land it, plant the sole and push the left knee forward. That could be where you're going to keep coming back to. But if not, push, rise up, take the right foot back, land on the big toe. And again, you could even push the left knee forward to keep that right leg straight. Or you can push, rise up, take the right foot back and then dip the right knee. Push, rise up. Take the foot back, dip, push, rise up. So again, it can be less energetic depending on what you do with that right leg behind. Big push, holding the right knee, extending the left hand up. So again, you can always lower the toes on that right foot and just have them kind of just tapping the floor to give you some support. You might take the hand away. And then take it back, spinning the body round to your warrior two position, like I know what I'm doing. So looking at your feet, so front heel back in an arch tends to work. Straight in the spine, looking out towards left middle finger. Reach back with your right hand, bend your left knee to sink into warrior two. And again, for me, it's all about this front foot, feeling the restfulness of the foot. Try not to grip, feel the toes supporting. And then from there, mentally bring yourself into your right hip, feel the bones connecting down into that ankle. Lift and spread the toes of your right foot, drop them down, feel from that big toe pressing, but that right ankle feels like it's pushing towards the wall behind you. Right hand drops onto the back thigh, left hand sweeps up, take the gaze to the fingers. And keep the left knee bent, but you can always take that hand more across to the right to bring focus deeper into these ribs. Moving back to warrior two, hands come around behind the back of the body and you turn your chest to this kind of inside edge of your left thigh. So again, focus to collarbone, pubic bone, keep this nice and still as we exhale. So keep the spine long, head reaches. So I'm just going to do a shallow one because it's easy to kind of think, oh, but it has to go down, you don't have to. Reach out with the crown of the head, push back through the knuckles, keeping that left knee bent, really feeling the presence of that thigh supporting the body.
Okay, so lowering yourself down, pivot your left foot so you're now facing the opposite side of the mat to before. Lifting the toes, drop them down, walking your hands inwards towards the body. So again, it's all about supporting. So you've got finger, you've all got fingertips on the floor, haven't you? So just making sure you've got your weight in your feet. If you're not sure, take your hands off the floor, notice the support of the legs and drop your hands back down. Again, do nothing with the head, just relax through the neck. Just feel the support of the feet and how that support there radiates upwards into the calves, into the hamstrings, into the hips. Just careful not to lock out the knees a little bit. So if you feel that the knees are pushing back, don't let them do that. Okay, so we're going to pivot back towards the front of the mat. We're going to do exactly the same sequence, but a little bit quicker, just because I wanted a two. And it takes a long time, all that, doesn't it? It's a steep gram. Inhale, push. Exhale, hips. Inhale, elbows. Exhale, nose. Tucking toes under, moving up, five breath plank. And then hinging up and back to downward facing dog for five breaths. So again, you can do something else, cat cow, lay on your belly, child. Stepping forwards into fold, five breaths again, lift and spread the toes, knees are soft, hands somewhere to support the body. Maybe you can bring your hands onto your and onto the backs of your calves this time. Actually, onto your calves, because back to your calves would be your shins, wouldn't it? So, rolling up the spine. I've forgotten which leg I did first. So, I'll just walk. Is that right? I think it is. So, I'll just do it for a week and then I forget what I've done. So dropping your weight, it is, into your right foot. There you go, bringing hands to heart and, uh, and belly. Begin to bend your right knee. I don't know if I have actually, yeah, it is. And then, you know, if you want to relax that left foot, relax the left foot, bringing those hips back, let the weight go into, again, that back foot, the back knee, the back side. So for me, the knee is just kind of hovering over toes, maybe slightly behind. Toes are in the same direction as that knee. Feeling the sensations in the buttocks. Again, hands can reach up. And then leaning into your left hand, left foot, bringing your right knee up and taking the right foot back. So again, you can plant the foot, push the knee, left knee forward, big push left foot. Exhale goes back, dip the knee if you wish. No, I've done it the wrong way, it doesn't matter. And again, exhale, because <laughs> your warrior two is going to be the wrong way around, it doesn't matter. So big push, holding on to right knee, taking left hand up. So again, you can always drop that right foot and give yourself some support through that foot if you wish. Lower the right hand if you want to. This is where I have done wrong. So you take that right foot right moving into what you do. It doesn't matter, does it? So looking out towards your left middle finger. Reach back with your right hand and exhale, dip your left knee, move into warrior two. And again, you can move that warrior if you want, but we didn't do it last time, did we? Use that right leg, pull it in, push it out, pull it in, push it out. Manipulate your warrior using that right leg. So from here, we're not going to do warrior for um, the humble sun warrior. I'd like you to now drop your right hand, sweep your left hand up. And then you can stay here in, in some warrior, but if you want to straighten your left leg, it can take you into a reverse triangle. So you're kind of reaching through those fingers of the left hand, deepen sensations down into the groin on that left side. Mm 
Moving back to warrior two, looking out towards your left middle finger, taking your hands behind the back of the body. Focus on collarbone and pubic bone, keep the space, exhale, leaning forwards towards that left knee. Left knee stays bent, crown of the head reaches forwards, hands are reaching back. Feel the presence of that left foot pushing into the floor. Lowering down, pivot your left foot and sink into your fold. So again, lift and spread the toes, drop them down. Walk your fingers in line with your toes now. And imagine you want to push your mat forwards towards the wall that is just in front of you, in front of your head. So use your hands to push your, hip, your um, mat forwards. If it feels too much in your hips, don't do that. You can really kind of rest normally into your hands and be more happy. So pivot towards the front of your mat, step yourself back. I'm going to need to tell which leg to do next time. Sit down into child pose. I'm nearly, and I'm like, oh, too late. So when you're ready, push up, inhale and exhale, hips come down. Inhale, elbow bend. Exhale, nose. Pushing up and back into, oh, plank pose. I forgot about that one, sorry. So again, knees down. Almost got away with it. And then back into down facing dog, looking back towards your feet, five breaths. Walking into fold again, five breaths. And then roll up through the spine to come to standing. No, that one. <laughs> You're going to walk your left foot forward, left foot back, sobs. <laughs> Thank you, I should go along. How do you... I don't know why I get comfortable, I do, I don't know. Okay, so you can drop your weight into your left foot, and again, hands to heart and belly, and again, that little bend. Again, sinking yourself back. Focus on your right knee, so don't let that lock out. Keep that softness through the right knee. Begin to sink into this movement. So you can feel those hips moving back. Hands can reach forward, stay here for five breaths. Stepping into your right foot, bringing that left knee up in front. And then take the left foot back. So again, Plant the foot, push the right knee forwards, and then again, big push. And then again, take it back, and again, you can land on the ball, push the knee forwards if you wish. Big push. Exhale, take it back, dip the knee if you wish. Big push. Take it back, dip. Big push. Take it back, dip. Big push, hold it, taking hand to the knee. Right hand moves up, and again, you can have the toes on the floor. That feels good, so just keeping that weight through the right big to right foot. Again, let go of the knee if you wish. And then taking the left foot to the back of the mat, pivoting around into warrior two. So we've got our right foot in front of us, arms reaching out at shoulder height. Left, if you pull back with the left hand as you did the right knee to move into warrior two, gaze in here, five breaths. Again, lift and spread the toes on the left, plant down. Again, move that leg backwards and forwards to deepen, to release. And then take your right hand up, left hand down, sweep up into some warrior two, and move the thumb. Or if you wish, straighten your right leg and again feel how that kind of goes deeper down into the groin move back to warrior two moving again your gaze to that right little finger 
hands are going to go around the back. Turning your chest again to the kind of inside edge of your right thigh. Focus on collarbone, pubic bone, keep it long there, exhale, right knee bends, lengthening forwards and down into our humble warrior. Pushing back through the knuckles, forwards to the crown of the head, right knee is bent. Feel the push through the foot, into knee, into hip. Feel the connection down into your left foot. And then sweep round, pivot your feet to the fifth in front of the crown to the side and you hold. Lift or spread your toes, drop them down, walking your hands backwards so you can feel the weight going to your feet. Again, you can keep it packed or stay packed, and it's a big fold, isn't it? But do very little, keep the knee bent, support yourself. Or you might want to turn your hands so the fingers are facing through your leg, and then you might want to walk your hands through your leg. You might not want to as well. There's always the option of not wanting to. <laughs> okay, so bringing yourself down to sit happily on the floor. You've got your legs back now, thank God. <sighs> right. I just laughed at when I sit down, like even I'm relieved. <laughs> like, oh my god, I've stopped moving around a lot movement. But once you start, you're committed, you can't not. <laughs> you're like, should we stop now? Uh, right, so we're going to go into neck and shoulders and some really nice little um, things to get up into this area. So, well, so you don't have to sit like me. This to me just it, it feels comfortable. So, sit comfortably is the biggest thing. And then we're going to just bring our focus into our breath just for a moment. Let your breath flood upwards into your heart center and down into your belly. Feel your breath for a moment. So we're going to just drop the chin down to the chest. I think of your forehead being heavy. And then lift your gaze again in front of you. And then again, lower your gaze down towards your, your chin, down towards your chest, forehead is heavy. And then again, lift your head back up. And again, lower your head. So just keep your head lowered this time. And just slowly tilt your chin to the left, chin to the right, exploring those muscles at the back of the neck. Do get a bit tight. Um, Exploring further, taking your chin more towards your right shoulder and again across towards your left shoulder. Lifting your chin and then look over your right shoulder as you do it next time. So again, you're going to lower your chin across the chest. Lift your chin, look over your left shoulder. And then again, take your gaze down to your chest. Across to the right, lift your chin, look over your right shoulder, and again down and across. And then we'll, from here, we'll take our gaze forward. So looking to the horizon as you do this, tilting your right ear to your right shoulder, so you're keeping your gaze forwards. And then take your left hand, reach your fingertips just away, so fingertips floor would be really nice. If, you, if, you, if your hands are reaching, so you can drop them down, just so you can explore into the left side of the neck. And then if you want to, you could place your right hand on your left ear or the left side of your head and just let that hand be heavy. Okay, so taking your hand away from the head, keeping your head again in that little wonky position, nod your head a little bit. And then make that nod a little bit more pronounced, really slowly nod your head, but in a more pronounced way. And then again, keeping your head wonky, gaze into the horizon, turn your head a little tiny bit. And then more pronounced, turn your head to the ceiling, look down to the floor, so again, keeping your head to the side. And 
and then draw a little circle in your nose. And you can be a bigger circle, just go with whatever feels least crazy for your head. And again, your head is still tipped, gaze into the horizon. And circle now your left shoulder. And then if it feels good, nod your head as you're doing it. Again, you've still got your head tilted. Again, really good massage technique for your own shoulders. You don't need anybody now you've got this. Okay, so to come out of this, I would ask you just to roll your forehead down to face the floor and then lift your head up and just for a moment notice the left side of your neck hopefully feels a little bit longer and looser. So again, gaze to the horizon, tip your ear to the left and then reach in your fingertips out on that right side. And just again, let your breath kind of massage into the neck a little bit. Now if it feels good, placing your left hand on the head. And again, you're not pulling, just adding that extra weight. And again, if it doesn't feel good, you can just take that hand away. So take the hand away and again, a tiny little nod. If it feels good, make that nod slower but more pronounced. And then you could come back to centre and again just shake your head a little tiny bit, little delicate shake, and then make it more deliberate and more slow. Back that ears, I can like hear like rustling in my ears, it's awful. And then taking your gaze to the center again, draw that little circle with your nose. And then move into the center. Circle your right shoulder. So do that now. And if it feels good, nod your head as you're doing it. Okay, so from there, lower your gaze. Place your hands behind your head now. And just let your hands be heavy on your head. And then raise your head, looking forwards. Odd little thing now. So keep your hands where they are. I want you to push your head into your hands. And as you do that, you feel your heart press forwards and your shoulders squeeze a little bit behind. Just start to relax your head now and just let your hands push your head gently forwards. And I mean pushing the light so you're just bringing that head forward. Elbows might come together. And then from this place, you're pushing your head into your hands to bring your head back up. Keep pushing your head into your hands so you feel that heart come forwards and heart open, chest heightened behind the ribs. And again, it's just that little relaxing of the head and the hands are heavy in the head and you're bringing your head down. And again, from this place, push your head into your hands to rise the spine, heart comes forwards. And one final time, the hands are just winning that little battle, bringing your head forwards, let your elbows relax. And then take your hands down, lift your head. And just spend some time just sensing your head. I feel like I've got a very long neck like a giraffe. So we're going to take it into a little bit of a twist now. So let's look over our right shoulder and take your hands just behind you. Taking your left hand over onto your right knee. Squeezing your right shoulder behind you to twist the bottom.
twist in the opposite way. So right hand comes around to left knee, left hand comes behind, squeeze the left shoulder, look over the shoulder. And then moving back to centre. Placing your right hand on the floor, look out to your left side and take your left arm out. You're going to reach the left hand up to the ceiling. Imagine that you are in the audience for something like, you know, I've been seeing Michael Palin now, they're like, oh, oh, Michael, Michael, and you just say, okay. but reach up through those fingertips, really create space through the ribs. And then you're going to bend your right elbow and that is going to bring you across, keeping your hips down. So if you notice your hips are toppling, you're just going to push that right hand to kind of stop you from falling. You've got your hand behind, bring it onto the carpet of despair very slowly. Everything's of despair, the chairs of despair, there's not a carpet of, I don't know, teamwork, carpet of things. Moving back to centre, placing your left hand down, look over to the right, right hand sweeps up. So the question I want to ask Michael Peering is where did you go on holiday? Because you know those trips. He didn't ask you. I, never got to, I don't know where he goes on holiday. Bend your left elbow and sweep across. Very good to try you. Moving back to the middle, widen out the legs. I think mean, making people work at this point, I think it's quite nice not to, isn't it? So just relax your toes with this and placing your hands on the floor somewhere in front of you, bow your elbows. Maybe walk your hands forward, just kind of rest into your hands a little bit. Let the back of the head, and the back, everything just seem a little bit more supported and long. So let's walk ourselves up to seated and lie down. Yay! I was pondering where Michael Payne goes. So settle into the physical body. How does it feel to be on the floor right now? So we did that little kind of body scan, didn't we? So going through kind of my coach. As you settle into the body now, reflecting on the weight of the head. Reflect upon the spread of the shoulders. Think to the lower back, where I kind of mentioned in the lesson, you know, where we often hold bits of tension. So some of those, we've got a really pronounced sort of arch. So part of that is how we just carry ourselves. It's really nice just to kind of push the hips forwards and to rest into the hips a little bit. But if you did that all the time, those muscles in the back of the body get a little bit tight and they kind of just remember that tightness and stay in that position. So just notice there if the back feels a little bit flatter. It could be that you're the other way, that your back is flat generally and you've got a little curve. So just reflect upon how you feel the hips and the lower back. And then notice the legs all the way down to heels. And then moving into our Pranamaya Kosha. Did you notice if you feel any lethargy? Notice if you have boundless energy. Or just notice if you kind of now in like some kind of middle ground. Well, yoga is all about finding balance through the physical body and the mental body and the energetic body notice this is more balanced in the energetic self there's no prana yama today as such just more of awareness of your breath just feel how your belly rises 
the folds and how you chest rises and falls. Spend some time with that breath. And then moving down into Manamaya Kushan notice. If the mind is with you or if the mind is still with what it does. So the thing that I have been doing, and I haven't really mentioned this one, is that of the pleasures and the different ways of being. I think last week we looked at ego, this week it's ignorance. But ignorance doesn't mean oh, I'm really ignorant, which is ignorance to different ways of being. You know, we can get fixated on certain things. And, you know, we can wake up in the morning and feel a certain way. And you kind of want to kind of tap into that and think, oh, this is how I'm going to be for the rest of the day. And we don't know any other ways. And it could be like, you know, with friendships and stuff that, you know, you always think that a relationship is always going to be a certain way. And, it might be nice to kind of realise that there's different ways of being and finding happiness in that. So last week we explored going to our favourite place and revealing what person sits beneath all the moves and the jobs and the crown thoughts that we have. So I'm going to do that again. Just mentally pick yourself up from where you presently are and plop yourself down in your absolute favourite place in the world. Imagine yourself sitting down on this in this place where you've gone. You picture yourself looking out to the horizon in front of you. Turn your head, look around, what's in front of you, what's to the side, what's behind you. What is above your head? What is down around you on the ground? Just picture your hands kind of going onto the ground and touching the ground and feeling what is beneath your fingertips, beneath your palms. And as you're doing that, you're kind of listening to the echoes of this place in your mind. In this place where you arrived, is it daylight? Is it night time? Is it evening, morning? Maybe notice any smells, what would you normally, normally smell in there? As you're kind of drinking in this image, I want you to notice what is happening within you right now. How has your breathing changed? How do you feel kind of in your throat and around your heart centre? So what is this image, this place revealing about you and how you are deep within? Those in our lives, it's nice to know we can come back to this person that sits beneath everything. When you're ready, place your feet on the floor and then gently lean your tailbone forwards into the floor, gently let your lower back find the floor, have a little roll backwards and forwards. And then drop your right leg onto the floor in front of you, extend your left leg up, interlace your fingers behind your left thigh. And then push your left leg forwards and let it bring you to seated. 